Welcome to Bob Folk Rides Hunting Adventure. This week we're going to sunny California and the sun sure did shine on me. I shot the whitest mule I've ever seen. What a fantastic animal. But boy did the weather change when we went to Colorado. The old snow was blowing, but the sun did kind of shine on me because I shot the biggest mule deer of my life. 199 and change. I didn't break that 200 mark. I'm still looking for it, but two exciting mule deer coming right up. Victor Chevrolet, Bass Pro Shops, and Alamositos Ranch present Bob Folkrod's Hunting Adventures. Seven continents, 80 species, a five-year quest in the making. High adventure, dangerous game, Real-world training tips. This is Bob Fulgrod's Hunting Adventures. You should see the mule deer on this island. And all he seen was a big frame, big rag. And the very next step, the way you breathe changes. The way you stay focused changes. That's when the real predator stage comes out into you. Almost every time you stop and start glassing, you could hear the ocean roaring in the background. Well, I originally had booked this uh, MUM, multiple use management, for my uh, Roosevelt elk. MUM is owned by Wayne Gordon Long. It's a full service wildlife management firm. They specialize in enhancing habitat conditions and wildlife populations on private land. They'll actually come in and set up, uh, set up your property for a hunting club or fishing club. They'll teach you how to manage that piece of property and, and get the most out of it. Now, Santa Rosa is a perfect example on what they can do. I'm there to shoot a Roosevelt elk. And we come around to one corner there, and standing on the skyline is this mule deer. And when they finally got a scope on him and everything, it was a, it was a three by four. You know, and, and I'm sitting there, well, that must be a management buck. And Chad goes, well, matter of fact, it is. Well, I wasn't losing focus on the elk, because that's what I was really there for. But I had tucked that away in the back of my mind thinking, boy, if I get this elk down, maybe I can go talk to Mr. Long and he's gonna let me, you know, get a crack at this, uh, this management buck. Well, we got that we got that Roosevelt elk, and I and I couldn't be more happier. You know, I mean, I was you know the stories was going at camp, and I mean, I was I I, I got what I came for was that Roosevelt elk. But tucked away in the back of my mind was still that management buck that I'd seen on that skyline. So I talked to Wayne, and, and, and he agreed that, you know, okay, go out there and see where you can find him. And I mean, and the predator stage was out, and I says, let's go back to where we last saw him. Look, we got to have a starting point. Chad says, good idea. So that's where we went, back to where we last saw him. You understand, this, this Santa Rosa is a big island. You know, so it was one thing to see him. It was another thing to think that maybe we might be able to see him again. That could be a long shot. We come around the corner and Chad hit the brakes and he'd spotted that mule deer from, I mean, a half a mile away. 
And he got out, put the spotting scope onto him, so that's him. That's a heck of a buck, eh? He's just below that shade line, isn't he? Yep. Well, I got a sheep hunt next week. That's about as close to getting to sheep hunting as you can get, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's a heck of a management deer there. That's exactly what we're looking for. We've got our elk out of the way, and we're going to go over here and get a little better look at him. Chad needs to look at him, make sure he's a mature deer. But, uh, you know, one thing about management deer, we can always back off if we need to. I mean, we start getting gear around, planning strategies, which way is the wind blowing and everything. And, uh, boy, I, I was instantly in that predator stage. Bob Folkrot's Hunting Adventures is brought to you by these five sponsors. Vortex, Best of the West Rifles, Huskama Long Range Optics, Kinetrek, Kufaru, and LJ Blessings Ranch. The new Victor Chevrolet building is now open. Visit us at 7200 Pittsburgh Victor Road, Route 96 near Eastview Mall, or victorchevrolet.com. Although Bob completed his obsession quest taking over 80 animals with a rifle, his first love has always been bow hunting. He's teamed up with longtime friend and archery coach Mike Price to help make you a better bow shot. This week's archery lesson is brought to you by Heritage Archery Academy and these great archery sponsors. Easton, Hoyt, Limb Saver, Gateway Feathers, and Tactical Hearing. This week we're going to talk about choices, bow choices and some equipment choices. The deal is if you're going to buy a high-end hunting bow, if you're going to buy a flagship bow from any company, you want to compare them, put them next to each other. Compare the fit and the finish. These are just machines. You bring them to full draw, you shoot them and they come to rest. The ones that are the tightest tolerance, the limbs fit into the pockets tightly, the cams and the axles are fit tightly, they're going to shoot better. The tighter the tolerance, the better the bow is going to shoot because it's just a machine. Remember that. Hybrid cam systems, are, they are the latest in advancement to cam systems. They just stay in tune better. They stay in tune longer. The biggest mistake that some guys will make, they'll spend $1,500 on a bow. Then they'll go to the bargain bin and spend $30 a dozen on arrows. You guys, your first choice, I think, is your bow. Make a good choice. This is a carbon defiant. The deal with the carbon is, it's warm to the touch always. No matter what I do, it's warm to the touch. It's tougher than an aluminum riser. It won't take a set. Uh, it's light. What's nice about a light bow is I can add weight and put the weight where I want it. If it's already a heavy bow, I can't put more weight on it and put it where I want it. This bow, if I want a little more weight on this side of it, I can add weight to that side of it. So a light bow, you can add weight and put it where you want. A heavy bow, you can't take a grinder to it. You're gonna, you're gonna mess it up and it's gonna come apart. The next choice, so first your bow choice. Make a good bow choice. Don't overcam yourself. Don't buy too fast a bow. You guys, I call them young men's bow and old men's bow. The DFX cam is smooth. I'm able to draw five more pounds with it. I think I got Bob up to like 35 pounds now with his bow, I'm just kidding. So the whole deal is it's smooth. It doesn't hurt your shoulder set. As you get older, you gotta pay attention to that. Your next purchase is your rest. Now the deal with the rest is buy a hunting rest. A drop away rest is pretty much optimum for hunting, okay? It makes the less contact. So this drop away rest is once you flip it up, it's in the up position. If you draw the bow and don't shoot it, it stays up. If you draw it and shoot it, it drops out of the way. So this is like having a capture rest, like a whisker biscuit, and a drop away all in one. It does everything. After the rest, the next choice is your arrows. You guys, if you're serious about this, pay attention to arrows, pay attention to some tolerances. The spine is one of the most important things on your arrow, not 
the stiffness. You can't buy, when we said buy a heavy arrow, you don't want to buy a heavier spine just to get weight because it's not going to tune as well to your bow. So make sure your spine matched and buy an arrow that'll do the job. This is the thing that goes from the bow through the animal and makes your dreams come true. That'll help you with bow purchases and arrow purchases. Well, this is one of them things where all that experience, all that lifetime of hunting, all comes down to making a stock. I'm hoping that, that this sun is hitting that side. If not, it's going to pour sand right down to him. That hillside over there, we got the sun coming up. It's hitting it. It should bring all them heat waves up. Keep the sand coming. You know, we got up there, there's several little valleys and cuts where he could be, you know, so it's better to let one person, and Chad had to be the, really the guy because he, it's a management buck, and management, he has to make sure he's old enough and we have to find him, and once we find him, once we realize how old he is, he gets a spotting scope onto him, then he can bring the team in. And once he broke over, you know, and he starts doing one of these numbers, I knew he saw him. He's bedded down, he said he's looking away from us. He's gonna put the scope on him, make sure he's a mature deer. What, we're, what we need to get is a management deer. And now it's to get that whole team of people into that position. When you decide to do a TV show, I mean, it's a team effort. It isn't one particular quarterback up there saying, I'm gonna throw the ball, and there's nobody there to catch it, or vice versa. And so everything seems to be going pretty good. The animal didn't have a clue we were there, and I hear Kyle say, the camera's too low. I've gotta raise it up. Oh, you know, so here you got a big old camera, big old tripod, and he's trying to raise it up as carefully as he possibly can. The animal still doesn't have a clue we're there. And all of a sudden, I don't know what, but it squeaked. And that old buck's head turned around, snapped back up and looked at us. It's a team effort. Can we get the thing shot and get it on camera? Finally, he gives me, I got him. You ready? Yeah. Here we go. Whew. What a buck. What a... I tell you what, a management buck like that, I can't believe he's a management buck. But I'm not arguing with those guys. They know their deer up here. When they say he's management, he's management. Lucky me. <laughs> that buck, you can't sell that to a trophy, uh, to a guy here that paid for a trophy hunt, but it worked out perfectly for a management buck. Well, I tell you what, I, I guarantee he ain't going to get any bigger than what he is right now. No, sir. But I would have took that deer, whether he'd been a management or trophy, because that's one heck of a mule deer right there. Yeah. It was right there, make or break us. But luckily, we got the job done. When we saw him the other day and he was skyline, and you says, you know, that, that's a management deer right there. I took yeah. my breath away. Oh, I go, yeah. oh my gosh. 
look at that. I'm gonna have to sit down and head a table. I mean, obviously I can see he's got more points on one side than the other side, but like I said earlier, lucky me. That's about the biggest management thing I had ever shot. <laughs> you know, every trip I've been on, whether it's successful or non-successful, I always come back with some memories, you know? Some stand out in my mind more than others. And this particular one here, this was like a vacation, adventure, all wrapped up in one. Almost every time you stop and start glassing, you could hear the ocean roaring in the background. There was always beauty. Any place on the island that you that, that you stopped or which is glassing, you was either, either hearing it or seeing it. The hunting was fantastic, the scenery, the sunsets, everything about the Santa Rosa Island was, was great. And uh, that's one thing about life's journeys. This was uh, truly a life journey going on to an adventure hunt vacation. It was fantastic. Transportation for all of Bob Folkrod's hunting adventures is provided by Victor Chevrolet. Check them out at VictorChevrolet.com. This is a sleeping bag, again from Khufu. It's a pretty neat setup. You can see that? The zipper. He's in the center. <laughs> How cool is that, you know? And the trouble, and I'll bring the I'll bring the air mattress out here, but here's here's happens especially if you get uneven ground. Like you got a little slope here, for instance, you know. You get up on this this air mattress, you know, and you're sleeping down and you roll over. That's the way you wake up in the gosh dang morning. You wonder why you're sore, because the air mattress is over here, the sleeping bag is here. Well, what I have done is I've sewed some eyelets on the bottom here. And I've got this so I can Tighten this up a little tighter. How cool is that? Now when you crawl inside. Especially when you're inside your bag, you're not gonna roll out of it. Air mattress is gonna stay with you. Hey, there's a tip. Hope it works for you. Stay comfortable, make your own memories. And that, my folks, is the tip of the day. For most hunters, harvesting a buck that makes the Boone and Crockett book of big game records is a lifetime dream. And doing it with a camera rolling, well, that's too much to even dream of. How are you today? That was perfect timing. I was just getting my stuff But redhead pro Good hunter Bob Folkrod has come to the ranch land near Montrose, Colorado with high hopes. Montrose, southwest of Denver, is located in a valley surrounded by wooded mountains and soaring peaks, some reaching to more than 12,000 feet. Montrose is a town where hunters are always welcome. In the heart of prime game country, it depends on visiting sportsmen to support local businesses. The valleys here tend to be dry scrub naturally, but ranch owner and hunt manager Kurt Sandberg likes to give nature a helping hand. Kurt manages his valley land to produce prime beef cattle. The same efforts that produce quality cattle also produce prime mule deer. And this year, Kurt's alfalfa fields have a bumper crop. The deer use the wilderness surrounding the ranch as bedding cover and come to the fields daily for their groceries. Plenty of quality food combined with a carefully regulated harvest program results in plenty of mature bucks. Watch over here and check this little pasture where I've been seeing that buck come out. Okay. He's 30, 31 inches wide, six, by five, 
just a big, heavy, massive buck. I'm gonna go back here and check this other pasture. Okay, we'll see you after a bit. Shoot straight, man. All right. Today's gearbox includes Redhead Extreme Elements Park and Pants, Browning A Bolt 300 Wind Mag, Winchester Nosler Ballistic Tip Ammo, Sims True Glow Limb Saver Recoil Pad. XPS Power Dry Thermals. Look at that buck right there. That's a beautiful buck. He's not 30 inches wide though. Kurt said he was definitely 30, 31, 32 inches wide. That's not him. He doesn't have any kickers or nothing. Kirk was pretty adamant, he says. He said that buck would be. 30, 31, 32 inches wide. I mean, he looks at these bucks every day. That's a clean buck. Gosh, sakes, he's pretty though. Got a bunch of does, bunch of bucks. It's incredible. Bob's in the midst of an epic effort to harvest at least one trophy class animal of all 50 species and strains of North American big game. His obsession quest has driven him across the continent for the last three years and still has two years to run. First turkey for the quest. Yeah. Only four more to go. The qualified score for a record book typical muley is 190. Finding a buck of that size is mostly a matter of good fortune, often assisted by persistence. But here on the Sandberg lands, the odds are far better than in most areas. Doesn't look like he's going to show up tonight. changed. That's not good. I just felt it hit back of the head. I better get out of here. I don't want to spoil it. This week's Conservation Angle has been brought to you by Wild Sheep Foundation. November is the season of love. And like their cousins, the whitetail, these big muley bucks are starting to defend their territory. Chasing off the competition is common, and for those who refuse to run from the challenge, take it head on. Going hoof to hoof is ordinary practice during the rut. Young bucks even participate with nothing to gain or defend. They spar picking on guys their own size. It's all about going through the motions of the season and preparing for next year. Mule deer numbers have been in decline throughout their range, but thanks to the efforts of a concerned group of hunters and conservationists known as the Mule Deer Foundation, that trend is about to change. The mission of the Mule Deer Foundation is to ensure the conservation of mule deer, black-tailed deer, and their habitats. Thanks to a wide range of projects including habitat renewal, scientific studies, and legal efforts, the future of mule deer hunting is looking bright. This group of concerned individuals can always use a helping hand so if you're into muleys, check them out. This segment has been brought to you by the Victor Chevrolet Deal of the Week. Check them out at VictorChevrolet.com. Chevrolet.com. Buy new roads. Victor Chevrolet. Same place I get my trucks from, and you should too. The next evening, Bob again joins Kurt to check another favorite area where Kurt has seen the giant buck. 
I hope he's there today, Kurt. I hope so too. As with much western hunting, it's a matter of glassing the broad open lands until game is sighted, then easing in for a closer look. There's some does out there. Let's get to see if we can get up here by this rock pile. Oh, it's that over by the wood line over there. There he is. See him rubbing his head up? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, That's my monster, gosh. Man. And so it is. What a monster buck. Bob decides to not take any chances with a long stalk. He sets up immediately before this incredible trophy decides to go elsewhere. Bob quickly checks the range. He's not taking any chances with this old boy. It's the buck of a lifetime. I got him. Here we go. I think I just unload that right there, man. Yeah. No use in going anyplace else. No. I'll tell you what. I've taken some exceptional bucks, but that is extra exceptional right there, man. Else, man. That one is in beautiful. One a thousand, one in a thousand. That is, I'm telling you. Huh. Oh, Kurt, look at that. Look at those horns, man. There's no ground shrinkage No there. ground shrinkage at all on that one. Baseball, uh. bat thick horn. Guns unloaded, oh my goodness sake. Look at that. Look man. at that. <laughs> oh, look, oh, just look at the pick him up like that. Man. Look at the points on the side. Yeah, look at that. The extras. Yeah. One over here, a couple big, over big here. Long main beams. You know, I know that they're, they're always heavy, you know, I've taken some good heavy bucks, but this has got the width, this has got it all. It's got it all, man. It's got it all right there. I tell you, they're going to be some monsters next year. Oh, I'm telling you, folks, right there is what it's about right there. Colorado mule deer, and I don't care where you're hunting mule deer, they don't get any better than that right there. That is one beautiful buck. Bob later learned that the magnificent buck scored 199 green. Like other trophies taken during the Obsession Quest, The big muley will be mounted and displayed at Bass Pro Shops so that generations of hunters can see for themselves the results of giving nature a helping hand in wildlife management. For help with all of your hunt booking needs, contact J&M Safaris at jmsafaris.com. After your successful hunt of a lifetime, contact Wes Good at kanadistudio.com for the finest taxidermy in the business. Be sure to follow Bob and all his adventures at bobfolkrod.com and on Facebook. <laughs>